a very good morning to everyone who is present in today's meeting. Um, good to see you all. Um, this is the Transforming Nigerian Youth Access to Market event, and it promises to be a very interesting one. Today, we are going to have um, exhibitions from some of our participants who are doing great things in the agri space, in the creative space, and every other sector in the economy. They are going to be exhibiting their, their goods as well as their services, albeit virtual. You know, usually we are used to, you know, um, going to people's booths, you know, seeing them and touching things physically. But all of that, we are going to be able to experience it virtually today. My name is Graham Eko. I am the project manager here at the Enterprise Development Center, and I'll be your anchor for today. So just for me to be sure that I am not just talking to myself, I know I can see the panelists, I can see our guest speaker, I can see um, our keynote speaker as well. But for me to be sure that it's not just us having this conversation, you can go to the um, discourse button, just click on it, and then say, good morning on the chat box. Just say that so that I know that you are here with me. So just type good morning, click on the discourse, and then type good morning in the chat box. So I know that we are here together. Right? I can see about 220 persons who are, who are watching, but I just need you to type that so that I know. Otherwise, yes, 280 persons. So is it, is it, what, what, what's the, what's the, what's the issue? The discourse button is on the right hand side of your screen. So if you click on it, you're able to type, right? I need to be certain that people, oh, fantastic, fantastic. I can see it now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Fantastic. I can see everybody. Awesome, 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 awesome. You're welcome to this uh, wonderful event. So as is customary with the things we do, we do not like to waste time. We don't like, we go straight to the point. So I'd like to invite the alumni director of the Enterprise Development Center, who is also the coordinator of the, of the Access to Market event, Mrs. Nena Ugu, to give us the welcome note. Please. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Graham. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to specially welcome you to this event. It's a very special one for us, this very online and the maiden edition of what we call our shared fair. So the market access event started last week. Kano, we had in Lagos, we had the physical one in Lagos, in Kano, and in Kaduna this week. And it's been an interesting one. And for some of us that joined us, I'd like to also thank you for doing that. So this morning, it's a special one. And I would like to appreciate and welcome very well our inspirator, one man that we like so much, who is always there to let the youth know that they can do it, that they can build their businesses. Dr. Chief Cosmas Maduka, you're welcome to the education. And uh, MasterCard Foundation, Chidema, you're welcome you. So on behalf of MasterCard Foundation, Enterprise Development Centers, the BDSPs, the Business Development Service Providers, who have started working tirelessly with these beneficiaries to make sure that they really get their self accessible and to be able to assess that market, we want to thank you. And our wonderful beneficiaries, welcome. So one thing I'd like to say is that as it's also a networking event. And like Graham said, on the discourse bus, why don't you just start by trying to type your name, type what you do, your business, so that you don't know who will patronize you. We must sell. We must buy and we must sell today. So thank you very much on behalf of all of us. Please sit down and then enjoy the program. Thank you, Graham. Over to you. Thank you very much, Nenna. Thank you very much for that brief and succinct welcome address. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, like Nena has said, this is a networking event. So please 
feel free to share your business cards, state what you do in the chat box. So because you don't know who might be needing your services or who you may be needing their services. So right about now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call on um, the country director of the MasterCard Foundation, who is our keynote speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, she is no other person than Chidima Lawansi. Ladies and gentlemen, Chidima Lawansi has over 24 years experience uh, spanning the commercial banking and development finance sector with a clear and deep commitment to promoting financial inclusion and tackling youth unemployment in Nigeria as well as sub-Saharan Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, please receive the country director of the MasterCard Foundation, Mrs. Chidima Lawansi. Thank you very much, Graham. Thank you so much to EDC for having me on this project. Um, just a few minutes to talk to you. First, to tell you a bit about MasterCard Foundation, we were founded in 2006 um, by a gift from MasterCard, the corporate. And since then, we've been intervening in many countries of the world. Um, and then we, in 2016 to 2018, we now launched our Young Africa Work Strategy, which aims to ensure that 30 million African youth have access to dignifying and fulfilling work. And when we say work, it's either employment or entrepreneurship by year 2030. So we now had offices in seven countries of Africa, and those are in Ghana, Senegal, in Ethiopia, in Kenya, in Rwanda, in Uganda, and now in Nigeria. And each country would look at the, the, the verticals, the places where it will en ensure that the youth have access to work. So for Nigeria, the MasterCard Foundation is focusing now in three main areas of agriculture, creative industries, and digital economy. Because for our own target, at least 10 million Nigerian youth should have access to that dignifying work by 2030. And as part of that, we now leveraged on enterprise um, development centers expertise that they've built over the years to, to collaborate with them in this Transforming Nigerian Youth Project which this access to market is part of because we want to build up the youth as nation builders and we like that we are very entrepreneurial despite all the things that are happening across the country as we note um the statistics by national bureau of statistics nigeria's population growth as of 2019 was about 2.60%, and it even exceeded our GDP of 2.1% as at that 2019. And out of that, almost 70% of our population is below the age of 35 years. So we really have a strong youth demography. We can look at it either way, the glass is half full or half empty, but those are opportunities. And if we look around what is happening now, we are plagued with insecurity, uprisings, there is banditry everywhere. You can barely travel by road. There are kidnappings all across the country. And all these things lead to very huge unemployment indices, especially for our youth segment. But why do we have all these um, conflicts? Because we can look at it that some form of social contract between the people and the government, they've really broken down. And many of our youth, have distrust for the government. And if we embed on top of that the COVID-19 pandemic situation, the lockdown, many companies folded up, so un unemployment rates skyrocketed. And of course, many of those that are affected are the youth. But the positive side is we really have, as we're discussing backstage, we have entrepreneurial youth that are so resilient. I mean, all of you are here logged in into this and looking for access to better education and how to better your, your, your lot, either in the business or in the employment space. So that is a, a good silver lining for us. And if we look at it, our youth have contributed significantly to the explosion we see in our entertainment industry. You know, see what is happening there. We're exporting our music 
across um, other continents. And in the fintech space, we're having people like Flutterwave, we're having Bonner Boy and, and, and Whiskey winning, winning um, awards, and Flutterwave getting so much um, valuation funds that can enable them expand across Africa. And these are really people who attend the youth. So we have, we have reasons to be hopeful. And what can we do to enhance the capacity of this youth to be part of the nation building? And what do we understand by that nation building? It's really a process through which all our people, regardless of their age, they have access to and control of structures and mechanisms that can help them govern their lives. So what are the things that can be done to enhance the capacity of the, the youth in our nation building? Because we need it even more now in this sector than ever. So access to education and practical skills is a very important thing. And like I said, I congratulate each and every one of you that you're plugged onto this um, platform. You're ensuring that apart from the regular education that you have through secondary, primary, secondary, and tertiary, you, you are availing yourself of other opportunities such as this to improve your skills in the marketplace. So, for, and the government has a fundamental um, deliverable to ensure that our youth have access to quality education so that they can become literate. Imagine even if you're entrepreneurial, you have to understand contracts that you're signing with your service providers or with your clients so that you're not um, out of pocket because you didn't understand what you signed, you just signed it. So our youth, they need to be trained on how to do their job. They need to know how to read and write. How can they analyze documents they are seeing? How can they discuss issues that have to do with the political and economy? Wherever they are, they need to stand out and understand what is being provided to them because the success of the nation really depends on our youth and our youth depend on proper education. Um, so apart from government agencies, multilateral agencies like ours, um, there are other private sector providers who ensure that youth should be built up to have sufficient educational qualities to be, um, they need to know how to work in the future. So digital transformation indices have to be embedded in the practical side of education so that they are ready for the next future of work. Because if we still keep teaching our youth the way our grandmothers, our mothers, and even us were taught, they might not be ready for the future of work. So embedding those digital skills are very important. And then there should be access to opportunities. When people, the youth finish with secondary, um, there is the, uh, some of them go into the vocational, some of them go into tertiary institutions. So the kinds of opportunities of work that the government should unlock should cater to both sides. There are people who would only go to vocational, and that's not, it shouldn't be seen as a negative thing, as a poorer set than those that go on to the tertiary institutions, because they are building up their skills to do practical work, still embedding those digital economy indices. So there should be a convergence of opportunities for those who had the tertiary education and those who decide that they will go into, into the vocational. And as we mentioned, the entrepreneurial spirit of the Nigerian youth is humongous. So there are opportunities for the government to leverage upon that and look at those institutions outside of the regular that incubate the youth and teach them how to be entrepreneurial. Example like this. There are other multilateral agencies that also fund us. There are, there, are, there are private organizations that also incubate youth. Sorry, there's some construction around me. Um, and they would teach the youth how to immediately write good business plans, how to understand budgeting, how do they link their products to markets. Those are things that you teach entrepreneurs. They may have capacities to, maybe they are making shoes, they will know how to make shoes, but to turn that into 
a business, how can they have standard operating procedures within that business? How do they know about the business of making shoes, that they can have spontaneous financing from those that they buy products from, and they can give even some form of credit to their suppliers to increase um, the large retinue of clients that they have. If they don't understand those things, they'll just know how to make shoes only, but not to turn them into um, successful businesses. So there has to be a space where public sector, private sector will set up hubs that train youths on being entrepreneur. Access to finance, I mean, uh, that's the world I came from. A financial inclusion is so strong. How does an entrepreneur expand if they don't have access to quality, affordable, and available financing? So this throws out to our colleagues in the financial services space, be they fintechs, commercial banks, microfinance banks, or even the microfinance institutions that are not regulated by CBN, all have their places to ensure that they give this affordable finance to the entrepreneurs and also teach them financial literacy. It's not only how to assess loans, you have to know how to utilize the loans. And then how can the youth be used in nation building if they do not understand gov governance and, and public policy? So that's a space where the youth should have not that they should be cynical about the political specter because it will be their turn very soon. And if they don't understand that, they can't, their, their potentials can be harnessed. How do they learn about grassroots politics so that they will navigate and say, I belong to a party, so I understand what's happening at that level because you can't suddenly wake up and say, I want to go, uh, I want people to vote for me, and I want to do this and that. You have to understand grassroots um, politics, just like you understand entrepreneurship. So there are many organizations that, I mean, if we give an example of the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth, and Advancement, it started from University of Joss. Now they've expanded, they, they train youth like them to know how to be involved in learning about the political um, space. So that those are pathways for them to learn it. And then there are other multilateral agencies like DFID or FCDO now. They have Westminster Foundation for Democracy. It's actually ongoing till the end of 2021, where the youth are engaged in knowing how to be involved in politics. There are many other virtual programs where youth can join in now that um, the, 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 the virtual um, nature of many meetings, are, they are here with us. So you can look for such um, platforms and then join them to learn about how your capabilities can be harnessed. And then in, in other general things, we're talking about access to markets for you. you uh, the youth, I'm also encouraging you that you need to be part of a network. If I give example those in the agri space, food industries, if there are sufficient associations that you can join. So that gives you access to wider markets and your voice can be heard as part of those that will build the nation. And as you're here, also increasing your capacities, look for other options. There are many free um, virtual entrepreneurship or employment platforms that you can join. And it teaches you how to be resilient, not just in your entrepreneurial activities, but as a person. So you have your voice in the society to add to how you can be um, part of the nation building enterprise for this country. And also in anything you do, embed it with di digital options. In looking at access to markets for your businesses or even as as a worker you need to understand the life of e-commerce the spectra of e-commerce and other digital options how do you look at having markets that are beyond brick and mortar beyond your geographies so any platforms that increases your understanding of these few things will help you in the access to market side of things. And as we said, of course, the financial inclusion part of it. Don't just take a loan because you think that 
that should help you. What would you utilize the loan for? What are your indices for repayment so that your payment history is kept appropriately? So um, these are just the few things before Nena throws me out to say that um, we are all part of this journey. And in it all, that we would have a win-win situation when our entrepreneurial and resilient youth are harnessed in their opportunities to help with nation building. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to quickly call on Mr. Peter Bamkoli, the director of the Enterprise Development Center, to say a, a, a word, you know, in response to the keynote speech that we've just listened to. Mr. Bamke, you are mute. You need to unmute. We can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Thank Great. you so much, uh, Chidima Lawansin. Uh, our relationship goes way back from, from your days in uh, Diamond Bank, the former Diamond Bank, and how you're so passionate about small and medium businesses, especially young people. And uh, I can see that in almost every uh, aspect of your journey, uh, you have been consistent uh, when it comes to uh, working with young people and working with, uh, with SMEs. So I want to thank you for that great uh, opening speech. But at the same time, they said I have to wear two hats. I look frozen. Am I frozen? Yeah. The second one, of course, is to welcome... Hello? Yeah, I can, we can hear you. We can hear oh, you. sorry, because I look frozen here. The second one is to also welcome uh, a great man that I, I admire so much. If, if I were to use one word for him, I would just say inspirational. Uh, because this gentleman who is a guest speaker is even more than constant than the Northern uh, Star. He, I had the opportunity of of interviewing him several years ago uh, with uh, our people. And up till tomorrow, I am amazed about the intensity of what he has been able to accomplish. The first thing for me was going through his experience uh, as a young, uh, young boy and his apprenticeship period. I don't think anybody today will have gone through that kind of um, apprenticeship today. I don't think anybody will have gone through that kind of apprenticeship today, but he survived it. In fact, for me, that is what we call the school of life. He went through that before going through the regular school that those of us have. And today is clearly, clearly one of the sweetest stories anybody can listen to. But there's one aspect of him that I am still thinking about a gentleman that values his name more than the wealth which he has created. That for me is huge and it's very deep. I listened to one of the interviews he had and because he guaranteed somebody, he took a decision to use his wealth to pay for that than to pay for his name. A lot of people will have said, hey, what the hell? I'm going to move ahead anyway. But he, and it's a big lesson when it comes to integrity. I have never, ever seen anybody that sticks with integrity and says, I will, I will stand on my name. I will rather lose everything that I have owned. But today, he has recovered more or less everything. And Dr. Cosmas Madrika, I want to thank you for inspiring not just the young generation, but indeed the entire generation. You may not know it, but you are an inspiration to many, many people. And for me, hard work, hard work pays. We've had close to 400 people on, the, on, on this platform now, and they are all eagerly waiting to listen to you. And on behalf of the entire members and board of EDC, I want to welcome you and thank you for accepting our invitation. Over to you, Dr. Maduka. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a, a real honor and a great privilege for me to 
be with you this morning. Um, it's really, I, I, I feel like a pregnant woman ready to deliver and uh, I, <laughs> I hope my audience uh, are under expectation, you know, because um, um, way back as early as 15 years of my life, I've always think that there's going to be a day like this. And um, for some reason, God sent me ahead of the youths of Nigeria to go ahead of them to have the experiences I have, um, to be able to dismantle every excuses anybody think he had not to be successful. Uh, because the truth is that if there's anybody under my voice this morning that have good reason for not to be successful, I should be that person. You know, ride or kada today and have good reason to blame everybody around me, including blaming God and asking why did he take my father when I was four years? What did I do to him? Okay, um, so the real truth about it is like is is that um, it's about one's mental attitude. I am a strong believer in the word of uh, one time president of United States of America. I think it's Thomas Jefferson that says, "Nothing in the face of this earth will help a man." or a woman with the wrong mental attitude. And by the same virtue, nothing can stop a man or a woman with the right mental attitude. It's not about what happens to any one of us, but what happened in us. Um, our state of mind, the way we think, the way we process information, uh, a key and it's all important that we start very early in our life. Um, many times you find out that many um, average family, children or well-to-do family are less adventurous because their parents try so much to protect them when they were young. So they are not exposed to risk and they always like to stand on the boundary, the, the gap where they needed to take one more step. They stop because the parents said, don't hurt yourself and all of those things. Um, but there are some of us who really we are on the floor and he that is on the ground fears no fall. And that means nobody is there to help you and you really don't have anything to hang upon but to work on yourself. Um, I think it will not be the right statement to say, but I, I just want simply to say that any difficulty you have in life is a great opportunity. It's a building block for your life. Um, it, it, it will be hard for people to hear this, but let me simply say that had my father been alive, there are many things I, I did that I would not have accomplished at my age because he would think for me and that would weaken my brain so don't complain that something went wrong in your life. It's, the, it's your mental attitude. If you have the right mental attitude, those of us who are in business believe that every problem is a business. Yes, because if you solve the problem, money will be the reward of you solving the problem. A lot of you get the wrong conception of what it is to create wealth. And everybody keep on pursuing money, pursuing money, pursuing money. The more you pursue money, the more the money runs away from you. But if you try to solve problems, you will be rewarded by the problem you solve because that's how wealth is created. Nothing more. If just go around on the road, keep on looking for problems and see if you can provide solution to it. Everybody that I've ever made it in life are people who are willing to will find solution to a problem. But there are those who are ready to complain. Oh, there's a problem, there's a problem. Oh, there's a problem, there's a problem. 
and they will say this to the end of their life and nothing reward them. I want the youth that are listening to me today to ask themselves a big question. Why is 97% of the world wealth are controlled by only 3% of the population of the, the, the world? It's just few people who decide to play by the same rule because there is a law that controls everything that we do. Few people who decide to take the bull by the horn, willing to pay the price, willing to stay by the rule, play by the rule of the game. The fortunate thing for me is that I understood this very early in my life, and that transformed me completely by the age of 15. I was clear in my mind where I wanted to be in life. I will not want to take much of your time so that you can ask me questions. But if they want to understand it, this world we are living in it, my understanding about it is that it's a big shopping mall that God created. Everything in it is up for grab. And it can be anybody's own. There's no need to say, oh, this belongs to good luck, Jonathan. This belongs to Ali Kodangote. This is a concert. No. Anybody that pays the price will pick it up. No, they didn't put the, the refrigerator in the mall, name of anybody. The person that owns it is the person that pays it. So the wall is a big mall. If you pay the price of any problem, the reward will follow you. So it depends on the way we think. I've said this before. I still didn't know why many people like to hear me repeatedly. I was fortunate to have a godly mother that inspired me to greatness, that made me to believe in myself before I turned five. At the age of four, my mother looked me, stared me into the eyes, and told me I can go places. I should believe in myself as I believe in God. So I started believing in myself because self-confidence is everything. Many do not understand it. I, uh, and, uh, I started believing in myself that very early in, in age. My mother was my, my, my teacher, my angel, and uh, uh, get me exposed to the market. By the time before I turned seven, I was already walking on the street, selling a, a color. And <laughs> some people looked at me and laughed at me, and some people, I insisted they must buy from me. And they said no. I said, you can't say no. And the person was wondering, is it by force? I said, my mother told me nobody says no to me. And, uh, you know, like a, a child kind of faith. I, I tell people you require three things to survive in life. Three basic principles that if you follow, you will not make mistakes. First is the vision. You need to visualize where you are going. You need to see the end before you begin. You never go to the United States of America without looking at the ticket. The ticket tells you the destination. Your destination is Boston. When you know the destination, then you know the flight to enter to be able to get that destination. So you must see the end from the beginning. You may not know all the route that is going to take you to that place but you will see it crystal clear. If you do not see it, you will not know when you get there and you can even pass it without knowing. So vision is the first mental attitude that is a prerequisite. I wasn't 20, I wasn't 25, I was not at 40 when I wrote five things I want to accomplish before I turned 20. I wrote them down because many young people tell me they have a vision. I say, is it a written dream you have? Oh, no, 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 you know, I, I, I'm planning to run a big multinational. My problem is uh, access to finance. If somebody give me 100 million naira today, uh, by the next five years, I will become a, a billionaire. It doesn't work like that. 
A dream without a plan is a wish. You wish you will be that. You wish you will do the other one. The first thing it takes is a written vision because that is your roadmap that will help you to guide you to where you are going. So I wrote down five things and placed them on top of my bed. Before I go to sleep every night, I anoint my spirit with those things I said I want to do. Many people have asked me why do I choose some of the things. The first thing I wrote is that I want to get married before I turn 20. And I was under 15 when I did that. One of my friends said, why is that important to you? I said, it is important to me because I didn't want to fool around. I don't want boy, boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing because those things for me I consider a distraction. If, uh, I'm speaking to a general audience, but I will not fail to tell you what the truth is. The truth is that before I turned 15, I came in contact with the person of Jesus Christ in his risen power. If you, for those of you who are not Christian, please forgive me to share my testimony. But I committed my life to Christ. You can call it God or Allah, whatever you believe, to guide me. When you have a vision, a man, a woman with a vision, live a narrow life. You are not, you are not trying to belong. Your vision puts you in prison. By 15, I was in prison of my goal of my life. So the second thing is that I wanted to have a child by 21. It's a duty of a man to take a wife, but at the end of the day, child giving comes from God because when you perform your what you needed to do, the rest is God who decided. It. It's not all of your vision will happen exactly the way your plan is. But because I knew I had this goal, by 18, I was living in three bedroom apartment of my own. I'm talking about the power of vision of where you want to go. There are many things my mates did that I do not join them to do because it will not collaborate in my vision. It's going to derail me. So I had a clear goal. I got married before my senior brother because he wasn't a classroom work. He had girlfriends. I never had any. So I wanted to have a wife and settle down so I can focus in the things that I wanted to accomplish in life. I wanted to own a car by 23. And I wanted to be a millionaire by 25. Those are my driving principles. And I, I try to guide it like a pregnant woman. Everything that will make that baby to be aborted, I fought it. Every instruction that I need to keep to be able to carry this baby successfully to deliver it, I did. And you hear some strange things, but it's a truth. But I'm telling you, the first thing you require is a vision, and I'm sharing a little bit of it. The second thing that is important in your life is faith to believe in your vision. Because if you never believe in yourself, nobody is going to believe you. Um, those of us who are Christians who read the story of a man called Daniel in the Bible. And uh, he saw a vision. He told the story. And he created a confusion and brought it late to him. Um, and everybody that had him said he was crazy. So the truth is that if people never say you are crazy, most probably sometimes the vision you have is not from God. It may not have been correct. If you really have the kind of vision I have, everybody told me I was crazy. Later on in life, including my mother, told me that I was crazy. And I will, I will say some of the things to you. But let me tell the story in sequence. By the time I was 18, I do not think truthfully that I had up to 100,000 naira by that 18. But I already decided that I would be a millionaire by 25. And I'm planning my life and avoiding distractions and anything that would derail me. That's why I talk about mental attitude. It's a key. By, seven, by that 18, 
I was in church. I saw a beautiful young lady. You know, when she sings, I hear the voices of the angel. When she smiles, I see stars in her eyes. My, it was great. I, it, it captivated me. I sat by the side of my seat. I raised my left hand up. I said, Lord, I claim her in the name of Jesus Christ. I have an empty pocket, but my faith was full. So it's not the size of your pocket. It is the size of your mental attitude, the way you think, the way you process information, the belief, your self-belief of your self-worth, who you think you are. So, well, I've said this before. Those days, those of you who knew me knew I was not educated. I, I wasn't, I didn't have all the, the, the luxury you, many of you have today, went to school, whether you went to secondary school, you have internet, you have Facebook today, you have um, um, email. These things, we are, we are not around in my generation. But I was determined. Nothing was to stop me. And that, I believe that statement that nothing will stop a man or a woman with the right mental attitude. It was clear. Um, my mother tried to discourage me and told me I am out of league attempting to marry this young lady because he came from a, an average family where, you know, uh, they have a medical doctor in their family. His uncle is, his brother, her, her uncle is, and uh, her senior brother is also a doctor. Uh, but in my, in my family, there was no one that is a graduate. So it's a, we are, we are, it's a completely out of league. The, let me make it short. I eventually take that lady to altar on December 24, 1978. So this is our 43rd uh, adversary. One day after we are living together, my mother was in the car and we are traveling. When these things come on me, I said it. My goal was clear. I wouldn't advise you to marry a man, if you're a lady, who doesn't know where he's going. What my wife did was ask me to share my vision with her, convince her that she would be a, one of the best ladies in the face of this earth if she married me. And I, I clearly knew where I was going, and she believed me. And um, we were traveling. It came on me, and I told my mother that um, by another two years, I will be a millionaire. Many parents are dream killers unconsciously. They make you to abort that baby that is in you unconsciously. They do not want to do it. They didn't know. But if you have a vision, nobody takes it away from you. Because I dropped my mother when she wanted to get down of the car. If I ever repeat again that I will be a millionaire by 25. And I repeated it, she decided to get down and I left her and drove away. My wife told me, what is this rubbish I'm doing? You know, that's my mother. I asked her if she wants to get down because I was ready to leave her and, and also go. Nobody takes it away from you. When you have a vision, nobody can tell you otherwise. So um, that's what I want to tell the young people listening to me today that um, your destiny is not in anybody's hand. Your destiny is absolutely in your hand. And if you call yourself entrepreneur, not even the state is in control of your destiny. At the critical time like it is like this, every problem that happened in Nigeria, what I see is an opportunity. I believe I live in the best time of my life in the midst of the most critical situation. And it doesn't mean I've always had things all working for me. I've gone through difficulties, really tough times, but I've always tried to look and see the upsetting positive in every most difficult time of my life. If you, if you school me, because it takes a, a gentleman it takes a criminal to, to appreciate a gentleman. 
and it takes a prostitute to appreciate a decent lady. So every problem, you can turn it around. So how different would anybody's life be if you decide to pursue integrity, living your life, doing the right thing every time, not your best, but what is required in the circumstances? And people begin to believe you and know that they can trust you. There's no limit to where you can be in life. So I think I want to summarize that to the audience and I'd like to take a question uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Um, the atmosphere is already charged. You know, like you said in the beginning, you are feeling like a, a pregnant woman who wants to deliver. So right now, I want to introduce the midwife who will, you know, guide in the process of this delivery. Okay. <laughs> Please, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the deputy director of the Enterprise Development Center, Mrs. Neka Ukekeri. Thank you very much. And I like that title. I think that's one of the titles I've never had, midwife. So I shall be birthing Dr. Matika's baby. <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much for... For everything, um, I, I, when I say everything, I, I mean the mere fact that we have uh, a businessman such as yourself, an entrepreneur such as yourself, uh, who stands for everything, uh, integrity, who stands for dedication, discipline, and hard work. Um, for, for the youths, so I'll say we, we the youths, I'm a youth now, since I'm also a midwife, um, you inspire us. <laughs> you inspire us. And in, in listening to what you're saying, um, one thing that really struck me is how you said that you're living your best life in the best country and how for you, every problem is a potential business. And that's very interesting because it takes only a wise man who sees, who knows, who has been to say that. Because as you say that, I know a lot of people have been doing their Canadian immigration they are looking at visa lottery. They are looking for visa to buy, ticket to buy, so that they can leave Nigeria because as far as they're concerned, there is no hope. And even before we started this conference, uh, we're talking in the, in the uh, back room. I'm talking about how, as a people, we're a people filled with hope. Now, these problems are there. They are real. When you started out, you started out some decades ago, uh, and some of these problems did not exist. Having said that, I do know that you had problems building up the brand that we know today, the Costaris brand. Some people will look and say, oh, no, you know, uh, they didn't have Boko Haram, they didn't have this in the 70s, 80s, and all that, and that um, he was very lucky. After all, after his apprenticeship, they gave him money and he started a business. But I know that you encountered challenges. I know that you had some losses. Um, I just want to just very briefly talk about some of the challenges that that almost made the Cost Charis brand not exist today. Okay, thank you. I hope my audience will support me and say and say push because I'm about to push now to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Please push. The midwife is push, here. Right? Okay, great, great. Um, you know, like I said, it's about mental attitude. Um, I recall, as we are talking about a lot of young people today uh, uh, going to be saying, oh, it's Boko Haram, I couldn't travel. I have been in a, a bus coming from Onitsha to Lagos here to come and buy merchandise. And with my small capital under my waist, where an umbrella has costed our bus, the driver told us, these are armed robbers. The vehicle didn't stop. He jumped out while the vehicle was moving on their one. I jumped out also myself from the bus while it's in a motion. I started running inside the bush. As you are running, you do not know where you are going. We don't know where we're going to meet a phantom because it's a heavy forest in the bush. Sometimes, so when you hear the sound of another person running, you continue to run and eventually sleep in that bush till the morning. Now, I don't tell you that there's no risk in life, but the real truth is that people who want to, to 
Well, that's why I keep on saying you make yourself when you are young. The best time of you to get lost, really lost and crazy, is between the age of 12 and 25. By 28, 30, you're already on a borderline. They make it at 40. They make it at 60, 70. But you is getting narrow in the pyramid form. Your chances of succeeding Simple statistic, go and check whether I'm right. Check all the successful people you knew in the age. Eighty-six percent of them did that between the age of 12 and 28. Between 30 years to your 100 years of making it, you had a 14% chance. So that's why, you know, it narrows down. So at the youth, that age, Yes, you don't want to die, but death is not material. That's the time to really go out there and give life your very best. That is the time to exploit things. That is the time to somersault. So if you can organize your thoughts very well at this prime time of your age, by 30, you begin to smile. Okay. Anyway, you see, uh, so that's one of the challenges. I went through that. It was tough, but I survived it. There are so many other risky situations that I have met that would have made Kosharis not to be existent. <laughs> People don't believe it. I've run bankruptcy because you only hear about Kosharis. If you need to think about my, my age, my really lifetime from the beginning, between Okay. It appears that um, we've lost the connection, uh, but for, for our, our listeners, what Dr. Madika was talking about was the simple fact that irrespective of the time or the season, challenges will always be there. People will always face those challenges. And um, despite those challenges, we must surmount those challenges. Oh my life. We're talking oh about death and head forth. Okay? Okay, huh? sorry, doctor. No, it appears that we, we lost you. I think the connection oh. tripped a little bit, yes. The, the connection trip, but that, that's fine. So I was just giving a recap and saying that you're talking about challenges and how no matter whether it was in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, even in 2050s, we will see challenges are a constant feature that we must. And one thing I like that you started with was the fact that you talked about mindset and how you talked about having the right mindset. And if they have the wrong mindset, they will not be able to achieve anything at all. So, um, so we've so listeners, we've listened to Dr. Maduka. He's talked about the fact that he also had challenges. He faced bankruptcy um, at different points. He's faced a lot of challenges, but it did not stop the building of the brand. It didn't stop the, the birthing of the Cost Charis brand. So now in building Cost Charis, okay, we know you faced a lot of challenges. Um, so I have a question here that was sent to me, direct message that was sent to me. And the person is asking the role of, of, of talent and the challenges, if you had any, in getting the right type of people to work with. Because the person says that um, they have a business idea, there are a couple of people now, two or three people working with them, but finding the talent that they can groom as successor has been the challenge. And because of that, it's not enabling them grow the business the way the business ought to be grown and he's asking for advice. So we have a couple of questions already. Uh, so that's the first one. So what advice do you have by way of recruiting the right type of people? Well, what I can say is that uh, the talent, um, I think there's a, somebody with a microphone is rebouncing. Okay, yeah. The talent abound, in my humble opinion, what really makes a coach 
a great coach is to take ordinary people to do extraordinary things out of them. Um, uh, I am one ordinary person that some people trusted and you could see things that um, came out of me. Um, today, I also take a lot of ordinary people. I've taken people and make a believers out of them. We have too much expectation most of the time. A good coach must make his player believe in himself and also give him some benefit of the doubt. When you expect too much from people, they are only at age not to make mistakes and offend you. In a situation like that, they cannot be the best that they can be. We are looking for a cake that is baked, but somebody needs to bake the cake. I've taken ordinary people and make them a great entrepreneur. Every one of us are born with a gift. No, there's no ungifted human being, including the person that is, that is, you know, physically challenged by whether you say he's mentally retarded. Many of the time, it's just to discover that talent that is in them. I've often said the challenge we have is that everybody wants to be entrepreneur. Let me repeat. The truth is that I never believe that we all can be an entrepreneur. Even when we are all be, we will never be at the same level because the same mindset attitude is what propels you and decides where ultimately you are going to be. So, when you, if, you, if I want to explain to you about my teacher, I have a teacher. I never, this is I'm learning. I didn't learn it from the University of Nigeria. Like Joseph, the things he learned didn't come from the University of Egypt. But there is an intelligence where you also get information. Uh, my greatest teacher and the greatest businessman I ever met in my life that has inspired me for greatness, a man that built a business that is 2,000 years old and the com his company after his death 2,000 years ago was still getting stronger and bigger getting greater clients than when he was even alive. Global 500 companies still studying the man, his leadership quality. He took crude people who were uneducated like myself that know how to get a god out of a fish and started refining them for transformation leadership. When we finish this matter, if you're interested, ask me who is this teacher. And you can call me. <laughs> I know who this teacher is, and that's why I'm saying. You know I know who this teacher is, and there's one word that you used, Dr. Madoka, that you just pushed for now, you better, and that's transformational. You know, yeah. and I, I and from what you just answered for the gentleman that asked me the question about and his struggles managing his staff, one thing that I, I can hear is the fact that um, for you, there's nothing like a bad staff. We must first accept to take them. We must first accept to groom them and then make them into the best that they can possibly be and transform them. So transformational is it. Transformation is there. Okay, so thank you very much for that. And I know who that, that, that man is. Uh, there are quite a number of questions. Uh, and this question actually is actually a reflection of what we were talking about a minute ago when you said you don't think everybody should be an entrepreneur. And this platform that we have today, the Transforming Nigerian Youth that uh, Ms. Lawrence talked about, um, is as a result of the challenges that we swim with on employment on the continent and in our nation, Nigeria. So we know that there might not be jobs. However, we also know that because of all the problems that we have, that those problems, like you said, are potential businesses. Now, this question by uh, Oyeni, he's saying, what advice do you give a man who has constantly been told to look for a job, but because he, of his age, because he doesn't have experience, he has tried to look for, for a job he cannot get, but he now wants to start a business. 
But his family, his friends, they're refusing to support him to start a business no matter how small. Now, what advice do you give to this gentleman? That's, that's a question in the Q&A box. Very simple. It is, it is old man is very good. Very good. Determined to survive, determined to prove people wrong that there's something you can do. Please go around and see. You can decide on yourself to go and learn how to fix motorbike. I'm just giving you an example. You don't need capital. Just do apprentice for six months, and they teach you. And by the road corner, you are not looking for money to go and rent a store. Once people notice there's something around there, you see people bringing bikes for you to fix. If you fix one person's bike, well, he tells the second person, you are, nobody is paying you salary and you are paying yourself. Let me, I can't understand people with five billion cells in their brain going to allow somebody to decide their what. By 15 years, I came to conclusion that nobody should decide what I want. I need to create wealth for myself. What I want will be what I do with my life. Not anybody take that decision. For some of the people listening to me, if you never read the book of Rich Dad Poor Dad, please go and read it. It's, a, it's one of the best uh, New York sellers. It's about a young man at the age of nine that went to his father, who has a PhD lecturing in the university, Robert Koizaki, to say that, how do I make money? His father said, please stop this rubbish, go and get a job. You go to school, you learn, you, you, you get a degree, then you get a job. This is, this is what we have been told. Everybody is fighting towards this direction. But this job is very limited. But this young man was very inquisitive. If you read the book of Robert Kosa, he said, once you take the first paycheck, you are trapped. Once you take the first paycheck, you are trapped. Because you see money, you start planning your life on it. The next thing you do, if you're a man, you start planning to get married around this money and settling down. The way to live in life it's not to avoid problem. It's to look for problem and confront it. When you see things you cannot be able to pay, they tell you the price is too high. Don't say, I cannot afford it. Once you say that, your brain, your attitude of thinking, block. Just ask, how can I afford it? The things you are saying is not too different from what you have said before. But that solution question, open your mind to look for how do you solve this problem? But when you ask a negative question, you close the brain and they stop thinking and they retire. So it's all about believing in yourself and doing the right thing, asking the right question. It's not all question that is right. If you ask the right question, it helps to open your mind. You've never said two things different. Listen, I never end, you may not, be, I, I never end 50,000 naira when I started telling people that I would be a millionaire. And I wasn't just saying it in my heart. Yes, people don't like you, said you are boasting. It, it makes people to hate you. And people say, how can you be talking things like that? We are talking rubbish. And people laugh at me and mock me. One of the desires to survive in life is willingness to be misunderstood and the, uh, willingness to be laughed at. If people laugh at you and the, it makes you have depression, then you are not going anywhere in life. You, so you must accept some of this reality. That's how God makes life to be. You need to pay before you need to, you read. So these are some of the things that I have done. So this young man, this elder man, whatever you are, you can fix a bike, you can learn how to fix a car, you don't need money to, all you need to do is to submit yourself to apprenticeship to somebody and say, I'm going to work for you for six months to teach me how to do this. 
and by that six months you have a skill that nobody will take from you. But the problem we have is that let, let me let me make this statement. It's important. Yes, sir. I have poor people always talk about money. Poor people. 98% of them is money. I don't have money. I don't have money. I don't have money. I need money. I need money. I want to do this. I can't pay my children. They talk about money from morning till night. When you tell them what to do to earn money, very ridiculous. The same person will read, the next thing will tell you that money is not everything. Does he really want to solve the problem? You know money is not everything. So why did you complain about money from money to night? The next thing is that money is not everything. Rich people talk about what they own. Oh, I just bought a new road trust. Hey, look at this, my watch. This handbag is $4,000. Oh, I just make a new bit. They talk about the, what they accumulate. They are... Uh, they are sick people can be very innocent always talk about themselves and what they earn. But wealthy people talk about ideas. They never talk about money. They never talk about uh, what they earn because it's idea that will change the whole world and it's idea that change the world. Um. Thank, Thank you me. so much for that. And I think, Oyedi, if you've heard from Dr. Madika, what he has said is that you must believe in yourself, number one. Number two, and this is something in the last 30 minutes that he has spoken, um, as a midwife collecting all, so right now I've, um, I've birthed a lot of babies. The first one, you know, was the fact that you must believe that you're able to do something. And doctor has said that over and over again, and he's talked about the fact that we all have talent. It's for us to discover that talent. So what he's telling you is for you to go back and reflect. Think of what it is that you can do. Submit yourself. So there's a word submission. Submit yourself to some sort of tutelage, which brings with it humility. Okay? And if you do that, then definitely uh, you will not have any problem. So, and the other thing is that whether they support you or not, it's irrelevant. If it's what, you, if what you're convinced about, go after it. Oini, I hope that advice, uh, you take that advice. So there's another question here, Doc. Um, so, and the person is asking and saying that the youths of today, uh, they, they are not concerned, they, they are not interested in learning how to fix motorbike, fix car. Uh, they, just want to, they just want to blow. There are a lot of them don't want to work hard to build a business that but they want a big business they want a good brand um and that as a fellow youth this person is struggling so the question the person is struggling with it and what advice do you have for youths who want a business but are not ready to work and the reason why they're asking is because they are discussing it's a possible partnership should he go ahead with this partnership because you can see from the antecedent of this particular youth that um, they might have a problem in future. But the person does have a very good idea. What advice do you have for him? Um, let me put a big word to say that I believe in partnership. Before I set up Costaris organization, I've been involved in about three or four partnerships. Because initially, you may not have all the money and that there's always two ideas many two good heads are much better than one bad one okay you may not get it right at the first time but those are part of the learning curve and uh, it's easy to you know build capital together even at any time you part away there's something you learn if you go and listen to the gate one of the, the uh, again two at uh, ten advices for some young people who want to be an entrepreneur or maybe one of his advice is that uh, pursue partnership. A partner first, his first breakthrough was with IBM. He continued to partner to the point that he has to partner with direct competition, the direct 
competitor, Apple computer. So you don't nail it out. You, you may not grow to that critical mass without it. Yes, you tell me, oh, Nigeria said, don't this. My first partner was my senior brother. It didn't last six months. We parted away. And life continued. I partnered with Edwin, who's on Tukum, it's late. You know, it didn't work well. We parted away. I partnered with the Didi Mosu, where we created Cosday. It is after Cosday gave way that I partnered with my wife and formed Cosharis. But I learned something in each of those places. So, um, um, uh, <laughs> the other question is that the youth of these days don't want to do anything. I totally agree. But even that in itself is a business for a good businessman to know that the youth of today are lazy. You need to make money out of their laziness because it's a, it's a problem. And every problem is opportunity. Okay? If you look at today, let me simply say that even today, as we are staying today, the youth of today, I totally agree, don't want to leave their bed, bedroom. The first thing he pick up when he wake up is his phone. That is his God. Who is the next person that called? What is the next man? If he has fifty, if he has fifty thousand in the bank, he wants to stay in his room, order food, order everything he wants in that food. Sometimes they find it difficult to even go downstairs to pick the food. If you can develop a means to bring it to them in the bedroom, they will also pay for it. So, so I, I understand this. But you know, somebody solved the problem of payment problem now in Nigeria that is going on very well. But nobody has solved the problem of logistics. Already, there is $200 million trading on that platform. There are many people who still want to sell on that platform, but they have not find a, a, a perfect solution to delivery. If somebody solves that problem, you will open the other market of, uh, of uh, internet uh, sales. So these young people may never have 150,000, but you will make money out of that, they are 150,000, before they run bankruptcy or anything, if you serve to solve their problem. So I keep on saying that every problem is business. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Maduka, for that. And um, so in other words, if you heard him right, he did uh, have a lot of partnerships. He does have partnerships. And partnerships can go either way, good or bad. Yeah. Um, and the fear of it going bad should not stop you because you could stand the chance of not getting the best transactions ever. Okay, so thank you very much, sir. Um, so Michael is saying that that he would really want to understand how you went from being bankrupt to going back into business. That you are telling us a story about uh, the bankruptcy at a time. That how did you bounce back, um, and you know what lessons can we can we learn from from that? You know, I don't want to, I don't want to advertise myself. Make I can move uh, so that uh, it doesn't okay. The real truth is that my story is way out of this world with all modesty. You can make a movie out of my life and it will sell anywhere in the world. And that is truth. When I speak, I'm not speaking from intellectual conception. If you looked at me, I speak on, based on experience. So when I keep on saying, you can't stop a man with the right mental attitude. People may not understand what I'm saying. Listen to me. I was bankruptcy. I, 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 did, I couldn't pay my bills. I was owing my landlord in my office. He's still alive today. If anybody is listening to me, help from Newe, you know Justice Ubezwano. I was owing him for six months. I couldn't pay for the store. When I saw him coming, I hid under the counter. He decided to lock the store. I had to come out from where I am hiding because he would have locked me inside the store until I get money to come and pay him. I was paying my landlord. I could not pay for my house for eight months or so. I was married. I have a, a young wife to take care of. What did I do? 
You can lock up yourself in a room crying for the bad situations that happen to you. I believe that you need to go out the listen, many times we think the best thing we can do in a situation is to do nothing. No. Your mind, your head is like a field. If you plant a rose in a field, you will get more roses that will come out of it. If you plant a mango, you will get a mango. The one thing you did, you will do is not to plant anything because weeds will grow in that field that is of no use to you. Weed will grow there. So that's why you must continue to study, learn, keep your mind busy, keep it active. Even if you are doing people a service on a pro bono where you are not earning money, you are exercising your brain and people are seeing you. You are networking. You are opening doors. So the worst thing you do is to say, it is too bad. You lock up yourself in a room and you are not willing to do anything. That's the worst thing you can do to yourself. I pick up a scale. You don't know what is weighing scale. Somebody has come I took it to the market because I am a man that is willing to succeed. If anybody climb on top of it, I collect 10 cobble. You want to know how I rebound back? I did that and went home with about 20 or 25 naira. My wife asked me what did I do. I told her I went to carry scale and she cried like a little baby. When a woman loves her husband, there are certain things you do. but. Many men do not know that there is dignity in labor. You only want your wife to respect you when you have nothing to show for it. I can sit back and my wife will be giving me pocket money and she will go and walk like Jackie. When she just come back, I want to make love to her. Because you slept all the day, you don't do anything, your body is very active. But God gives people wives to help them. Your wife will be your helpmate. My wife saw my willingness to succeed. She went and picked up a job. I have lived, my wife has supported me in my life. She was earning 55 naira and will bring it to me at the end of the month and I decide how we spend it. That's when I said we are partners. I am, I am real about it. Okay. God sent a woman in a man's life to help a man who is doing something. Because she is a helpmate. There is something you are doing already for the woman to come and help you to do it. But if a woman shows up in a man's life and is doing nothing, you confuse the woman in addition to you being confused. Because what she comes to do is to help you to actualize yourself and when he can he find out you are doing nothing. So, your your manhood, your your you that your your you derive your value on the job you do by deploying yourself. It no job is too bad. If you need to carry shit, listen to me, carry shit because money doesn't smell shit. When you after getting the money, you air it so that the shit smell will go out of it. I haven't given somebody money and he said, hmm, 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 it is dirty. But when you are not willing to do the right thing, you make excuses. Nobody should not succeed in life that is willing to succeed. But your desire to succeed must be greater than your fear to fail. Your, 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 those mistakes you make in the early stage, you are rising and falling, is your building block. No child got up and walked without falling. If the child feels bad because people laughed at him or her when she fell, he will be learned for the rest of his life because he will say, I want to wait until these things are law, it's very God, it's principle. If you understand it, don't use your present condition to assess yourself and to limit yourself. 
Because those of us who are Christian will read in Genesis 8, 1 or so, that there is a season that, that as long as this earth remains, there will be a time and there will be a season. You may be going through the winter period of your life, but that's not the one. After winter, you meet the best weather of life. The next thing that happens after winter is not summer, because there is heat in summer. It's autumn, where there is a cool breeze. The trees are bruising, beautiful. But after the winter period, after the, the autumn period, there's going to be summer. Hot July sun scorch you to death. And then you will see a fall. This is the season that we all live like in life. Summer, winter. If you refuse to change your clothes during winter time, you will die. Winter is not going to beg you to cooperate with him. You just need to know the season has changed and cooperate with that weather. If you dare the weather, the weather will kill you. So when your winter comes, please put on clothes. Don't say, eh, we don't wear this uh, uh, big kind of cloth. I, I am strong. You will be frozen to death. And the winter will not beg you to put on clothes. So that's how nature is. I learned this principle very early in my life. And I am confident to first life. In no situation I see that frightens me. Thank right. Thank, thank you so much for that, Dr. Maduka. And um, if you can hear him, um, what he said is that, and you know, it's interesting, even though I'm a midwife, see, I've been writing all the children that you've birthed now. One thing that really strikes me is the fact that, without a doubt, there was this crystal clear thing in you that your success in life was an ease. Let me not say it was. Anybody's success in life is determined from a very young age. And it's interesting because the, the audience are youths. And in as much as he talked, you know, he said something. He said between the age of 12 and 25, that is the time for you to do everything that you ought to do by way of foundation for your success tomorrow. And the youths of today in Nigeria, we have a running joke that our youths are the same age as middle age in other countries. I remember when there's a program we're doing, the UN program with the federal government there. We increased the age from 25 to 30 to 35 to 40 because of our own peculiar dynamics in Nigeria, where we have ASU strike, we have this, you have that, and by the time a child is graduating from university, they are closer to 30 than, than 20. So our youths today are disenfranchised, our youths today are discouraged, our youths today are in the world, I don't want to use the word, it appears like they have no hope. There's nothing that they're looking to, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. It's okay for us to be talking about what we're talking about now. And I know that some people, because there's some messages I've gotten, are saying that all these things that we're saying is just English. We're speaking English. And at the end of the day, it is tough. At the end of the day, even if they want to start something, that it appears that the odds are against them. Now, this question is actually, I think this question is actually for me and it's for you. And this question the person is asking, for somebody that has a great idea, for somebody that has gone and learned a trade, but still needs money to buy, let's say, the screwdriver, the spanner and all that, and does not have that money, what should that person do? Is there any foundation? So the person is asking, do you have a foundation? Is there anything that you're doing uh, like by way of charity for such people? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. You are listening to me today. Maybe you don't know what my hour was. There are places where I speak for one hour and I'm paid one million naira just to speak for one hour in Nigeria, not outside. This is true. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, I'm doing this purely pro bono. I have a call. Somebody just called me from Dubai. Now I put all my two phones on uh, air mode 
to be able to do this. The worst thing you can get from a rich man is money. The, no, not the worst. The least, the least thing you can get from a wealthy person is money. I want young people to change their mentality because you cannot build on a wrong foundation. You cannot build on a wrong foundation. It's a question of time it will crash. The least thing you can get from a wealthy person is money. What you need from him or her is an idea. I've had a lot of young people tell me to my face that they've been over mentored, they have been over um, mentored and have been underfunded. Because, because all they believe is that money, they need money, and once they have money, they will change the whole world. That's the idea. Please ask me again. I am not all the authority, but I can tell you, if you want to know my own conviction, next time we are going to do this, this thing we are doing, I will ask you to allow me to talk to the young people on what I consider 10 commandments of building a small organization to great. I didn't get it from anywhere. I something I carved out out of my 48 years experience. Okay. It to eighty or ninety percent. Um, apologies, it appears the internet. Okay, it's back. Thinking, it's not more than. 25 to 30 percent. The first thing you need is an idea. Hello, sir. Uh, Graham, can you hear me? It appears that we've lost automatically. Yes, I can hear you. I think his network is. Oh. Okay, I think it's a network. Yeah, let's just wait for him a little. Too. Bit. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's interesting for our listeners and the youths. Uh, please remember, you can also use the discuss button or uh, to drop your your comments or your contributions, or if you have direct questions, uh, to put it in the Q and A uh, box as well. And it's on your extreme right. You see it right under partners. Okay, Dr. Madika, welcome back. Sorry, I think the internet tripped. Can you hear me, sir? I'm hearing you now. Okay, all right. So you were saying that our next discourse that you're going to share with us the Ten Commandments. Um, and what I wanted to say is that you can actually just give us some tips and then the youths that are listening, this is enough motivation and incentive for them to come and finish up uh, when we have a different platform that will focus on those Ten Commandments where you not only list them, but you probably express it uh, for us. So you can go ahead and talk about it. Um, before I get to that, like the last statement I said, which I do not think you hear, is that a lot of young people put money in top of the equation more than the idea, okay? And that's where you get the statement, they have been over-mentored and underfunded. But, but I'm saying, if you have the right mental attitude, and have a clear vision, there will be provision. In every provision, in every vision, there is a pro in front of it. Pro, vision. When the vision is clear, the pro will come in front of it. Something will happen, and somebody will give you a lifting hand. The question, the direct question you are asking, if you really truly believe you are entrepreneur, Entrepreneurs are people who create capital. It's not people who people give capital. You, are, you create wealth. Go get a job. Now, when you get that job, you go to the job. They will pay you for the job. But that job is not your work. That's one philosophy I have that many people have not discovered and they get confused. 
your job is not your work. Your job is what they pay you for what you do. Your work is what you are born to do, what God created you to be. When you discover it, nothing will stop you and wealth will follow you. The first thing God gave to Adam was not a wife, as young people look for girlfriend. The first thing God gave his son, Adam, was a walk. Genesis 2.15. God put him in the Garden of Eden to address, to dress it and to keep it. Means guide it. Walk is the first thing. God created a man as a manager. The crisis we have in the world is poor management. Man was the motivation of God's creation. Then rain never fall in the first of the earth until man was created. Because he is looking for a man to address and make the whole place beautiful. The man has a, 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 a work to do. So if you go to your job, when it is five o'clock in the evening or six, don't go home and start watching television. Don't go home and stay on internet and look for mail to forward to everybody. As if that will put you in a Guinness Book of Record. When you go home, start deploying yourself. This guy speaking to you is really crazy. I don't listen to all this negative news many of you listen to about people they kill here, kill the other place, saps your energy. I don't listen to news. And therefore, I do not have television in my house. Till today, I don't have CNN, I don't have cable TV, I don't watch home movies because I need to keep my heart and my head clean. If you know the power of concentration, if you can get your mind together to focus on what you want to do, you will make a nonsense of a laser beam. You will make a nonsense of a laser beam. The power of concentration, you break a bottle by putting your mind together. I can sit in this seat, you see me sat now. I can sit here for 18 hours. My only get up is to go to the bathroom and come back. And I started training myself to sit at the age of 14. Yes, I'm making money for the young people in analog form. But by any standard in the world, I am a wealthy man. Whatever you think you say, okay? You can make digital money and become wealthier than myself under 12 months. But my wealth is sustainable and it's been sustained. So if I lose everything I have, I can recreate all of them all over again with this right mindset that I have. So, the person I consider my enemy is a man that will get me distracted. Any other thing is uh, 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 money will come and go, but you will continue to, to make them. If you are thinking right and behaving right and willing to render service, money will follow you. Next question. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So, I think the next question I, I have here um, sorry, just one. So I think the next question really is that they're, they're not really those type of questions. Uh, people are blown away by everything that you've, you've said. And, you know, with all sense of humility, I totally agree with you what you said about your, your whole life could be done into a film. Um, and the questions really now are around whether there's a book you have written because there's so many nuggets of wisdom coming out of you. We've barely done an R plus and you know, we've already been inspired. There's so much. Do you have any book you've written or they've written about you? Is there any platform that we can go to so that we can keep being inspired uh, by your life's journey so far? Autobiographical, a book 
on my name from trials to triumph okay. the title is from trials to triumph cosmos madoka and charity because charity's story um it's in amazon you can buy it online but you can also call my pa i will leave the name here he will get it to you so you can get it for just maybe a thousand or two thousand naira a copy than buying it in foreign exchange you can get a copy here but joma bo will tell you where it is and you can reach joma bo on 080 please send a text and uh, explain what it is because you may not be able to pick 080-350-18500 if you are interested just tell him you are looking for this book where can you get it he will send a message back to you don't call 080-350-18500 okay. tell him you are looking for from trials to triumph okay. all right the story the uh, cosmos are telling so you will get it I'm planning to write another book, but that will be at my 70, because there are many new things that have happened. This was written before, uh, before I was 50, so it was uh, celebrated at my 50th birthday, and I'm 63 today. So in another seven years, I'm already compiling another book uh, that will commemorate my 70th uh, birthday. So um, I've been under pressure to do one, but I've not had the concentration to do it. So I'm gradually... Um, no, handing over to the young generation so they are 63 we start working for people like 25 so i'm already on my uh way out um to do other things that uh, makes me happy okay thank you very much sir um for your time for your words of wisdom um a lot of us are still very interested in the ten commandments um, and for people that know me, they know that I'm um, Oliver Twist's sister. I will always ask for more. So I will ask for more. Uh, I'm craving your indulgence, now that we will bring you back. And that particular forum will just focus on the Ten Commandments that you mentioned. Um, so in, in, in wrapping up, it's already uh, 22 minutes to 12. In wrapping up, uh, Dr. Maduka has said so much. As a pregnant woman, uh, he was in labor and he didn't have one child. We had multiple births. Um, and just because for me, I, I, I remember things, I, I write a lot. So when you talked about documenting, it's, uh, it resonated with me. And you've noticed that as we're talking, I, I, I write a lot. But beyond writing, for me to remember things, I need to make acronyms up. So for everything that Dr. Maduka has spoken about, um, I'm using the acronym of WIMS. You know, when you have a child's WIMS, that's W-H-I-M-S. Uh, but the WIMS, for me, uh, sits on two critical things. This is the second time that I've had the privilege of interviewing Dr. Maduka. Uh, the first time was a couple of years at Federal Palace, and now we're doing this with an audience of more than 500. Uh, but two things stood out then, more than five years ago, and they're still consistent and constant today. And those two things are his faith. He is a man of extremely strong faith and his vision. Now, this faith has driven Dr. Madoka, and everything that he's talked about speaks and speaks volumes about the strong faith he has his Christian faith, and even the choice of the words that he's using, everything stems from his Christian faith. The, the analogy he gave us as, as the, the world's best businessman, he was talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and his faith and his vision, uh, those, are the, those are the two foundations that the whims I talked about. Now, for me, one thing that he has talked about um, on their whims, the first of you there, it stands for work. And Dr. Madhukar said that we all have jobs, but our job is not our work. We owe it to ourselves to understand the work we have been placed on this earth to do. And never confuse the job that we're doing with the work. So that is the top you. Now, the H stands for hard work. Everything about Dr. Madhukar, I've always known about him before I met him years ago. And now, he's a man that believes a lot in hard work. And that, yes, you can blow and get some money, but for you to remain in business, to be sustainable, to have wealth working for you, 
it requires a lot of hard work. So we're not talking about hard physical work, but work must be done, research must be done, you know, effort must be put in. We must be deliberate about that. Now, the I is very important and it's integrity. Everything about Dr. Madika speaks of integrity. And a man without integrity cannot last, he cannot stand the test of time. Then the M is mindset. Everything Dr. Maduka has talked about cannot be done without the right mindset. And that, something about the mindset is the fact that before, you must first believe that you can before you go and do it. So the mindset of I can do it, the mindset of things are bad now, but they are not going to be bad forever. The mindset of, you know what, I know I can do it. I have believed I can do it. I will do it together with other people. So the mindset, the ability to be able to open up yourself to collaborate, even if things go wrong, you still must have the mindset to open up. Now, with that same mindset, the people that will help you build the app, the people that will help you build that sustainable business, they will be there. But you must first have the mindset to open up. There's something he talked about, and I wrote it. I wrote a lot of things that take and make. We will take people from the workforce, but it is our duty to make them into transformational leaders. So that mindset must still be there. And lastly, the S. The S for me talks about, and it's still tied in strongly with the mindset, having a solution-focused life. Every problem you see is a solution, is a business about to be better. And everything about Dr. Madika, from all the businesses he's done, talks about the fact that people work and they see problems, but Dr. Madika is working and he's seeing solutions. And even if you listen to him, he will give you one. He's talked about logistics and the whole thing about logistics. So, Dr. Madika, I'd like to say a very big thank you for your time. I have been um, inspired again and again uh, by reading about you, observing you from afar. And today's session has uh, really blown all of us away and how you have been resilient, how you have been dogged at keeping, despite everything that happened you're there. Um, you have inspired us to keep at it. You have, you have inspired us to stay focused and to keep our eye on the goal. And you've also inspired us that we should not um, what's the word? Look down on mentoring. And the phrase being under mentor, uh, over mentored and, and underfunded is something that we should get away from our mind. We still need to be mentored. You were mentored uh, by different people and you're still being mentored by different people. So for the youth listening, uh, if you haven't come on the TNY program, I want to assure you that you need to come on the TNY program. Everything that Dr. Madokai has talked about He's talked about capacity building. He's talked about being inspired. He's talked about being mentored. All those things and more are what the TNY program will offer you. Um, if you are on the TNY program, and I can see a lot of comments, there's some uh, chats that have been coming direct to me, people that are currently learning and changing their life by being on the program. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the TNY program with the people in your network. Tell other people who believe that uh, without money, they can't do anything. And let them understand what it means to be transformed and to transform other people by being on the TNY program. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you very much, Dr. Madhuka, for your time. And remember that I've already asked, I've asked in advance for all the youths on this panel, on this platform, sorry, that you will come back and share with us the Ten Commandments. Um, I, I can't even wait for, for that session. And we will reach out to uh, to your um, executive assistant to get the books uh, from him. And I, we put the number, Dr. Madhuka shared the number. I, I put it as soon as he said it, and so did my, my colleague. Uh, the number is there for us to uh, order the books. This session is being recorded. And for those people that registered, you'll get the recording. Thank you so much, sir, for your time and your words of wisdom. Uh, we have, I have been blessed, and I know a lot of people have been blessed. I can see Rebecca putting that in the, in the comment there that she has been blessed to be here. A lot of people have been blessed. Thank you so much for inspiring uh, this generation and future generations to come. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It's my pleasure. God bless you all. Uh, it's a great pleasure to speak to you today, and I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you. Just go ahead, believe in yourself, 
and you will be amazed what happened in the next five years. Okay, thank you so much, sir. So as we're leaving now, um, so the the conference continues, the share fair continues. Uh, we have another uh, panelist coming. Uh, so Dr. Madika, uh, we'll just go into one or two booths now, just to see what the booths have to offer. Um, and uh, my colleague that is over there will direct please shortly. Thank you very much. Um, over to you, Graham Echo. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you very much, Dr. Cosmos Maduka. I'm sure we are all charged as youths. We are charged right now. So, <laughs> like you, like you have said, nobody is going to drop anything on anybody's laps. We have to go out there and work. You, 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 you know, go out there, do something, keep your mind busy. That is one of the key things that you have said. And then those people who, the people who pay the price are the ones that get the reward. So ensure that you are doing something. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen and fellow youths, I'd like to invite the product manager for Flutter Wave, you know, to, you know, take us through how you can maximize the Flutter Wave platform because we are talking about access to market. So how you can use Flutter Wave as a veritable tool to expand your business, to grow your business, make payments, and all of those things. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Jola De Ogunlano, the product manager, Flutter Wave. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope we're all having a fantastic day. Today, I will just be walking us through how we can use the Flutter Wave store to expand our businesses. As we know, e-commerce is the way forward. If anything, uh, COVID really showed us that we all need to be online you know, to keep our business going. In one minute, I will share my screen. Graham, please let me know once you can see my screen. Uh, yes, we can see your slide. Okay. All right, awesome. So, first things first, you might be wondering what is the Flutter Wave Store? It's quite simply, it's, it's the best way to go about managing an e-commerce business. You, you will be able to receive payments from everywhere in the world. You do not need to have any tech skills to be able to open up your Flutter Wave Store. It's very plug and play, so once it's you go online to Flutter Wave Store, you are able to set up and start running in five minutes. There are lots of benefits, as you can imagine. Um, like I said before, you don't need a website, you don't need any coding skills, you don't need the help of a developer or a tech guru. You are able to electronically generate and keep track of all the invoices. So you really are able to get a better idea on who is owing you, who has paid, who hasn't, all of that. And then you're able to create a seamless shopping experience for your customers. They don't have to reach out to you to say, is this available? Is this available in my size? How much is it? You know, you sending bank details, all of that. You're also able to generate a payment link. Now, what a payment link means is that you, you send this link to all and sundry, and then they have the option to select whichever is their preferred payment method. So if it's PAGA, if it's USSD, if it's bank transfer, if it's card payment, your customers get the, the choice to you know, select that. There are lots of features of the Flutter Wave store. Uh, these are just you know, the, the key highlights. So first things first is you are able to upload as many products as possible you are able to upload variations of the product so if you have a black leather bag for sale for instance if it comes in blue red yellow and in different sizes of course you are able to upload all of that you're also able to upload the specific quantity per those variations so if you have 10 units of the black you put 10. If you have 16 units of the red, you know, you're able to put that in as well. And there is a lot of security involved in the Flutter Wave store, as you can imagine. We have an inbuilt fraud management solution. So it is safe for you as a merchant using the store, and it's also safe for your customers 
who come in, you know, wanting to shop for items. We are also PCI DSS compliant, meaning that all the card information that your customers impute is 100% safe. I, th I think Jola, this internet is shaky. If you are there, but we can still see your screen. If you are there, no, we can't hear you. We can't hear you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's just be patient for a little while. I'm sure she'll be back. Hi, Jolade, can you hear us? We see you changing the slide, but we can't see you right now. Okay, people, um, just for you to know that immediately after the Flutter Wave presentation, we will be going on the exhibition tour, right? So uh, exhibitors are already in their boots, ready to showcase their wares. Um, at the end of this, we're going to sh share our screen to show everybody how to navigate the boots, how to visit different businesses and all of that, make purchases, see what they have to offer and all of that. So please just stick around. So also in the meantime, you can put your questions in the chat box, put your questions in the chat box, chat questions you have for Flutterweave, how to probably set up your store and you know make the best use of it. Thank you. So sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's internet um, problems. So I would just like to quickly take us to the the um, exhibition booths. Uh, before then, my colleague is going to drop the links into the links uh, into the chat chat box. The link to the exhibition booths. We're going to drop them into the chat box. But then let me just share my screen and show you how how this works. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I hope you can see my screen. Please, if you can see my screen, you can just... Not yet, uh, screen. It's not up yet. You can't see it yet. Uh, okay. 
How about now? No. You see it now? Yes, it's up now. Okay, okay. So once you click on, thank you very much. Once you click on, on the link, this is what you see. Welcome to Transforming Nigeria Youth Marketplace. And then we have the agro exhibitors, the creative exhibitors, and then, of course, the main session, which we are on currently. And then if you just click on, you know, choose any of the sectors you want to go into, you can either say creative or agro. So for me, I, I, I'll, I'll go to agro because I like to farm and then probably eat. So this is what you see. You see the different companies. Uh, you can then view their profiles or just go straight to their boots. Here you have um, Aminu Tune Agromech. You have Gosby Farms, Alufa Global Farms, AM Farms, and the likes, you know. All of them are ready to receive us. So you can just look at their profile to see if this is actually what you want to, you know, visit. And if it's cool with you, you can then say, visit my booth. Okay, so I hope everyone is prepared to start shopping. Use the link and it will direct you um, to the exhibition ground. So you can check all the different things from the creative space, the agri space and all of that. Now I want to tell you one interesting fact. We have different people selling from Lagos, Kaduna and Kano. I was just in Kaduna um, for the physical exhibition and there were so many amazing products on display. And I know that you will soon see some amazing ones um, over here as well. So Graham is back. Graham, you went to check out the store before us. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome <yes>. back. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, I don't know okay. if you want to keep sharing your screen um, and all of that. Um, that's essentially it. So once you go through that process, you you will be in the different boots that you you know choose to see. So I'm not certain if Jolade is still here. If our internet is back, otherwise we will just you know go to the exhibition. Um, I think we can go to the exhibition and um, and then probably yes. come back at the end yes. to to finish up with um, Flutterwave. Exactly. With. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the link is already in the in the chat box. Just copy it. If you can't click on it there, copy it and then put it on a tab and then go through the process that we just went um, through. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, I see your question. How do you set up your Flutter Weave shop? When Jolade comes back, she'll be answering that. Okay. Thank you very much. So guys, please, let's visit the, the different boots right away. The link is in the chat box. Don't look for it too much. Yeah. And if you're having any challenges, please do let us know. Do let us know if you have any challenges um, joining the the exhibition would just yeah, so Jolade is back and... in. Jolade is back in. So if you've not gone for the exhibition yet, um, you can listen to Jolade. Jolade, can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you, but I could before as well. So can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, loud and clear. Okay. 
Yeah, so there are some yes, questions in the chat box be uh, before you, so maybe you want to take those. How do I set up my Flutterwave store? Um, those are the questions being asked. That's a good question. Okay, so I'm just going to walk us through the process. It's going to be short and sweet, but then I will address those questions in the process. Yes? Okay, I think that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so I'll just uh, share my screen and we'll go through it quickly. All right. So there's all right. some. All right. You guys can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, so we 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 set up the Flutterwave store as a response to the COVID nineteen pandemic. So it was very clear to see that you know SME businesses, uh, micro micro businesses were just not able to make any money in that period. And so for us, a response was you know, creating the Flutterweb store that would enable businesses to sell online as quickly as possible. And so who can use the store? Everybody can use the store. You just have to have uh, a legitimate business. So you don't have to have your CAC um, details because we have two options. So if you are an individual who has a side hustle, you know, you buy and sell some items, you're welcome on board. And if you're a business who's registered, you have all your CC, your TIN details, we have um, a platform for you as well, but everyone is free to join the Flutterwave store. Now, the demo that I talked about is how, how does the Flutterwave store work? I'll just show you in a second. It's a quick demo. What does the path to success in your online business look like? What are the ingredients of the You need the Flutterway store. Here are the ingredients you need to succeed. Great product images. Responsive layout. Default payments integration. Instant communications. Fast checkout. And even delivery. If you have no coding skills or knowledge, you're just as welcome because the Flutterway store doesn't require any. You can create a store for your business for free and start selling in five minutes or less. Step one, visit www.flutterwave.com forward slash store and click on set up your store for free. Step two, complete the sign up form and click get started. Verification mail, click on the link. Select how you want to accept payments. Step four, click on store in the side menu of your link panel for details. Which you can store from around the world. The Flutterwave store. Just sign up, list, and sell. It's that easy. Super easy, like I had read before. So here I have an example of what the flow would be all the way from when your customer comes to your Flutterwave store all the way to the point at which you, you get paid. So this example is with JK Fashion. If there's anybody who has that business name, then it's a pure coincidence. Um, so the first things first, of course, you share your Flutterwave store link with your network. So you, you share on social media, you share uh, via SMS. If you have a group of uh, existing customers that you, know, you want to tell that you are now present on the Flutterwave store, then the customer comes in, makes their selection from JK Fashion, and then they click on proceed to checkout. So you notice that they didn't have to call um, the merchant first to ask any details. Proceed to checkout. At that point, there's a page that pops up where the customer puts in.
the USSD option QR code even. Um, so the customer picks whichever payment option they're most comfortable with. JK Fashion then receives the payments in their Flutterwave wallet and are notified of the order uh, information. So this is basically saying, oh, the customer Jolade wants to buy the leather bag in a size S. And then JK Fashion, of course, goes into where the items are stored, picks the item, packs it in whatever packaging material they would typically use, and then dispatches the item straight to the customer using a delivery partner of choice. After all of this, JK Fashion can always go back to their dashboard, which essentially will show them you know, the number of orders that have been placed, the time of day that people mostly place orders, the days of the week. So this can also guide uh, JK Fashion on other business decisions that they want to make on their flutter waves. So there are a couple of merchants that have store and you know just for the purpose of time I'll show you one of those videos. My name is Tosin Lawal and the co-founder of Smoke Barbecue in the Box. Smoke Barbecue in the Box was led by myself and Ruarto and her wife. We pretty much have a passion for cooking has been part of and that passion to Hi, Jonathan. Um, the network seems to be acting up. Can we watch the video later out. and just go through the I links for out. now? Definitely. So uh, that's fine. I can just go through the other bits. So I'm going to go very quickly. So we do have some features that are coming up soon to you know further improve. Um, the store as a product, one of them will be integrated, trackable, last mile delivery. So what this means is that your customers don't need to ask you, oh, where's my item? I ordered it last week. They can see in real time the status of the movement of those packages. Um, there's also going to be digital ad management. So what this means is that you don't have to be an SEO guru or you know be very savvy in terms of how much to allocate to Facebook ads, Instagram ads, you know, that sort of thing. We are going to integrate that onto the platform. So just at the click of the button, you're able to generate your ads and then, of course, boost visibility for your stores and ultimately increase revenue. And then we're also going to have ratings and reviews. So we know that when you come on board, you'll be stellar merchants. So instead of uh, only you being privy to that information, ratings will make it such that is visible for everybody to see placing an order from your store. And then in this journey, you don't walk alone. We do have a webinar that is called Grow My Business. It happens twice a month. It's basically for us to show you resources and tools that are available to you as, a, as an SME business on what you can be doing to increase your revenue as a whole. This is um, something that you know a lot of people have given us feedback on to say this has actually helped me as a business owner. And without further ado, I will summarize just to say this is the way forward. We all know there are several other channels, but this is the most efficient way because for it. They don't need to confirm if it's available. They don't need to confirm the price, you know, DM for price. And they don't need you to, you know, send them back the payment information. Once they come on the store, see what they like, they're able to check out immediately. So thank you everyone for listening. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. At the Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jalali. I, I don't know if you put your con contact details, how they can reach you for clarifications and, and things like that. 
Okay, so you can send an email to hi at flutterwavego.com. So hi, just H-I. And then our on Twitter, you can reach us at FLW support. And on Instagram, it's the Flutter Wave. And on LinkedIn, it's... All right, okay, we caught that <laughs> before you you left okay thanks 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 very much thank you very much you're most welcome okay on that note ladies and gentlemen we would like to go to the exhibition booths so please just follow the process that we shared before um the link is still in the chat box just copy paste in your tab and then go visit the different businesses and please if you have any challenges doing that just also let us know right here because we will be here, right? Thank you very much. Thank you. And please, um, as, you, as you go, make sure you tag us in your posts on Instagram, on Twitter. EDC, on, on Instagram, we are Enterprise Development Center. On Twitter, we are uh, at EDC4SME, EDC figure for SME. So you can put some of those quotes that um, Dr. Cosmas Maduka shared and ensure you tag us to, to all those, right? Okay, please let's go to the boots um, right away. Thank you very much. <laughs>